Okay, at this point, let's talk about the basic components of your Google Classroom. There are five basic components. You have the stream, which is where we're located right now, classwork, where, not shockingly, you will put all the work to be done in the class. You will have people, which talks about who the teachers are and who the students are. Now, I do say teachers because you can add additional co-teachers to your Google Classroom. This is a great situation when you are sharing responsibility for students, either the person in charge of the in-person learning and the person in charge of the remote learning, if that's how it's set up, or whether it is a special education teacher that is a co-teacher, or you simply have a teacher's assistant with you in the classroom, they can be added as a teacher with all the rights. Additionally, for students, you can add them as well. This all falls under people. Finally, we get to grades, and that's our fourth step with the settings way over here as that fifth step. So let's take a look while we're here in settings, and I told you you could update your information at any time. That is always going to be found under the gear under settings. With that, let's rename this Mr. Moore's Special Class because we're going to use this as our example. Our description is, this is an example class. And we have section one of this class. It meets in room 205, and the subject is technology. Now, you don't have to have all of these included, because you'll notice when we started, it wasn't included. But in this case, you can update it at any point. Now, the next thing is key to getting students when we get to the student page. It says the class code is C-A-T-P-O-U-M. This class code is how students will enter and sign up for your class, or at least it's one way. I'll show you another when we get to the people section. This can be displayed large, so if you have it at the front of your classroom, or if you simply wish to copy it to put it into an email, you can do all of those things, even make it full screen. So that is the class code. If for some reason it is any way inappropriate or you simply want it redone, simply reset the code or you can disable the class altogether. Now the next setting is for stream. Students can post and comment. Well that's great maybe for older students or older classes, but you need to make sure that you have the settings for your classroom exactly as you want them. So for me, in most cases, only students, only teachers can post or comment is what I'm going to go with, because that means whatever's in the stream is what I put there, therefore it's moderated by me. Now, other teachers who are just as good at this allow students to comment only, where they put up announcements, and students can't put up announcements, but they can comment on the announcements that are made. This is great if you have a lot of interaction going back and forth, or you have a lot of student-led learning. And finally, students can post and comment really makes this an interactive space for them, but there are some challenges to that, so be careful. I'm going to set mine to only teachers can post and comment. Notifications this simply tells you how much notification shows up on the front page. Does it show in all great detail? Does it show condensed? Or does it not show notifications at all? Show deleted items as a general rule stays off. Guardian summaries. This is all about guardian summaries. You can take a look at this, but it's a helpful tool for keeping track of missing work, upcoming work, class activities, these types of data that are kept by Google are really good tools to help in your classroom. So you can turn those on, leave those off. There's our Google Meet again, so if at any point you want to turn that on, it's right here. Now, for grading, you'll notice that was one of our five big components at the top of our screen. In this case, no overall grade means there's nothing being graded through Google Classroom. Alternatively, you can grade on total points, or you can grade by weighted category. Now, 
This is entirely dependent upon your classroom situation and your district situation. You might go categories in a math class where assessments and tests done in Google Classroom is worth some percentage and practice is worth another. Alternatively, everything could just be based on total points and you gain all the points based on however many points are in a given assignment or no overall grade and you say well why would I need an LMS with no overall grade it entirely depends on your district because if your district uses a student data management system like Skyward or like Haiku it may actually keep its grades elsewhere in the system and so instead of teachers keeping a grade book in classroom and a grade book over in Skyward or whatever the school data system is you don't keep the grades over here alternatively it could be a combination where certain categories are kept track of in Google Classroom and Google Classroom you only put what does its best work in Google Classroom and simply grab the grades as a total from Google Classroom and put them over into your district grading program all of these are going to be very specific to your district, so talk to your administrators, talk to your technical people, talk to your team members. And you can even add categories as necessary. So remember I said you could update all of that information? There it is. Let's go take a look at a different tab.